Hey guys, Matty from Extreme Auto Caravan and Camping with you again today in the lovely Barossa Valley. Now these guys have come down from Aroxby Downs up north in the state for an off-grid setup from us. So we camped out here at the uh, caravan park in the Barossa here. Beautiful um, morning, rainy night. Not a good day to test solar because I'm covered in trees again. That's not why we're here. I'm here to talk about the off-grid setup. So. Once again, guys, as with all my videos, I'll give you the full rundown in the specs here. So we've got 560 amp hours of the PowerPool custom-made lithium batteries with a 250 amp continuous discharge each. So that means one battery can support this inverter, should one turn off. So 560 amp hours of lithium here. We've got the Victron Multi Plus Inverter Charger. That's the 12 3000 VA running on all of the factory outlets. Microwave, air conditioner, the outlets in the kids' beds area, the outlets next to the um, next to the bed area over here, in the kitchen, outside, induction cookers, the works, full kit and caboodle, completely off the grid at the touch of a button. So, solar-wise for this one, I was able to squeeze a thousand watts on the roof of this, which I'm like really stoked because there is no shading issues on the roof at all. We've got two 100 watt cells up the front on the on the angle, and we've managed to squeeze four of the 200 watt exotronic panels on the rear. So the, these panels here are in two high voltage strings. So we're running two solar regulators networked together for combined charging. So the 200 watt panels that are on the front are on the smaller 20 amp solar controller and the four that are on the rear are on the larger solar controller. So we should see yields of in excess of 50 amps from full sun in this quite easily any day of the week, all day long. Very happy with the, uh, with the solar replenishment on this one guys. So, Keeping to a thousand watts on the roof is really good. That's actually enough to keep up with this air conditioner. Now this is the Houghton Belair 3400. They're, they're a very thirsty AC, um, almost up there with the Ibis 3s. So this thing's gonna be sort of a thousand watts an hour. It's, it's not as efficient as the Harrier Plus, Harrier Light, Truman Inventor, or the uh, Ibis 4, as it's not the inverter style, but this is a little bit better than the Ibis 3, slightly. <laughs> it's it's what I call the old roof clucker. So this has the ability to run it without a problem. And that is because it's the multi plus inverter charger here. We've got the multi two on this. Now, um, the DC charger, the system that was in this was already the Enerdrive system on an AGM battery, which were outside. Now they've been relocated. So this had a DC charger already in it, the 40 plus. So we've utilized that to save our mates some money and we've reprogrammed it to suit the lithium batteries as well as up to the 50 amps of charge from the vehicle. So these guys are going to be pumping in 50 amps from the vehicle. You've got the potential to put in well over 50 from the sun. Um, you don't need to be a rocket scientist to add those numbers together, guys. And that's this, this replenishment rate on this while these guys are driving. They have the ability to pump in 100 per hour um, all off grid while they're driving along to their beautiful free camp. So with 560 amp hours of lithium, even if they woke up in the morning and they looked at their battery monitor, and it said minus 400. Okay, so that means they've only got you know 160 left. Well, in four hours, if it's sun, the sun's up. In four hours, they'll replace that, and that's pretty crazy. They will definitely get the 50 from the vehicle because that's the engine running and that's guaranteed. Solar is variable, but at least that's on top of that number. 
Um, traditionally, when a system that's installed like this newer van with the DC charger as the charger for alternator and solar, it'll prioritize, as you know, that it'll only do the one. Um, the rest is doing nothing. That's why we run it separately. We'll always have the roof array, so the thousand watts on this one, is running through their own solar controllers, which are always replenishing the battery. And then the DC charger supplements that on top of that charge rate. That's why you get a combined charge rate, and that's what we do. So this one already had the ePro battery monitoring system in it from Enerdrive. We've utilized that as well because it does have the 500 amp shunt, which means it can monitor this inverter quite easily and all the charge rates from the DC charger, the solar charger as well. Um, we've, we've programmed this MultiPlus charger to the 120 amp charge rate, which is warp speed charging from a generator or mains power, which we're on now. So um, as with all my other videos, guys, I'm gonna give you full rundowns on this. I will put the drone up, um, come in from an angle so you can see what solar's on the roof. Um, these guys have the Swift hot water service. So we've opted with the customer to give them the option to have that with the ability to run from the inverter. What that means is if these guys run out of gas, they can flick the switch up there and it will pull 1000 watts from the battery system. Um, the idea behind it is, the only reason I've done it is because they do have the switch upstairs, which the Swift hot water services come with. They can control it. So when they're on mains power, they'll turn that on, right? And when they unplug mains, they'll turn it off. Now, if they're free camping and they turn the inverter on, obviously you're gonna put the hot water service to gas, your fridge automatically goes to gas. But if they run out of gas, they now have the option to put that hot water service on to heat up the water to do the dishes or um, you know, have a shower while hubby goes for a drive to fill up the nine kilo bottle. It is a backup system and it is labeled and it is pretty easy to see that if you left it on, you're gonna see a thousand watts being drawn from the battery and you can't really accidentally do it because you're gonna see that and you'll be like, well, where's this power going? That's right, hot water service, off. Um, under normal circumstances, I always put that before the inverter with zero potential to it run from the inverter. But in this case, I gave the customer the option because he's pretty switched on and he knows what's going with it. And these guys actually turn it off anyway. So their habits are already in place to conserve energy when they're off grid with the ability to run that. Um, the three-way fridge in this case, um, the GPO that's up here, um, that's been fitted right next to the factory GPO on the CMS system is before the inverter. So the fridge will only ever run from mains power and never from the inverter. But if you unplugged it and put it into the factory GPO, it has the potential to run from the inverter. Once again, if they run out of gas, it's completely a backup option for these guys. So there we have it guys, 560 amp hours of lithium, 6.6 .6 kilowatt hours of storage. We've got the MultiPlus inverter charger, 12 120, running on all the factory outlets. We've got the Enerdrive 40 plus DC to DC charger taking care of vehicle charge. So that's up to 50 amps of charge from the vehicle while he's driving. And the solar array, a thousand watts of solar on the roof with high voltage strings running two solar controllers networked together, giving well above 50 amps of charge per hour in good sun. So that's the combined DC charging as well as the solar at the same time to replenish this battery quite quickly. And it's got the factory EPRO Enerdrive battery monitoring system in this. So we're able to incorporate this whole complete overlay setup into the factory monitoring system without any impact to the van's aesthetics. There we have it guys. Very simple and off-grid ready setup for uh, you know your next camping adventure. Run whatever you want, induction cookers, coffee machines, toasters, hair dryers, washing machine, anything, anywhere, anytime, on the side of the road at the push of a button. Enjoy guys. All right guys, so there we go, inverter's on. What we'll do, we'll do the mandatory standard rundowns. I'll put the microwave on for a bit. And what have we got here? We've got a kettle, so that'll be two and a bit thousand watts. So that should be over 3000 watts there or thereabouts. We'll get that running and we'll watch the ePro battery monitor. Here we go, we'll have to zoom in like that. So I'll do that. We'll probably we'll scroll through it. So we should have the amp. So yes, we've got watts set up on this at the moment and amp. So I'll leave that on that. We'll scroll through it and try to get some clarity on it. There, so there we go. See what we can get out of it and do the rundown. Okay, I'll start with the microwave and try and keep this glare off this, guys. Microwave running. So I've got solar on as well. We're not getting much, which is why you can see that there. So watts, and I'll flick the oh, that flick kettle on. And the kettle. 20 cell. I did say about 3,000. Three cell. That's a big kettle, isn't that? Hey, know what we're pulling, guys. 
How can we do that? That's because we got the Victron. Look at that discharge. Whoa wee. There's microwave on for 30 seconds. There's the kettle boiling away. Um, hot water service is on the input, but we're, we're free camping, guys. We're unplugged. I'll put that back on again. See it. The 1200 watts is going into the battery. There we go. Or 89 amps, so, and 13.49 and rising. Cool bananas. So that's on the ePro battery monitor. These are cool. Um, you can buy the Bluetooth adaption for these now. Um, I, I still prefer the Victrons. I, I love the Victrons. They're just a bit easier. The interface is better. I can network them into the system, especially when there's all Victron stuff. I can tie everything in together. But for this case, it's completely fine. This will still show you state of charge and you can program every little aspect that's required to suit the lithium battery bank that you guys fit. There we go. So that was a combined um, kettle and a very thirsty microwave running nearly 4,000, I think it did, it hit 4,000 watts before, so there we have it. They're running the Houghton, Houghton Belair 3400 now, aren't we? What's that on, 16? Yep. Off grid, nothing coming in, no solar, no engine running, and that's what she's pulling in watts. What do we go? We'll go the amps for you guys. There you go, 70. Not bad, impressive.